In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to use the Bloom split testing feature. You might also know this as A-B testing. And what it allows you to do is create different variations for the same opt-in form and have each of those variations displayed to different visitors. And then Bloom collects the statistics for each of the different variations. And then we can see which variation is converting better, which one is getting you more subscribers uh, per impression. So um, how this works is uh, once you've created an opt-in form, you can then create a split test for that opt-in form. So the first thing you need to do is create an opt-in form. And to do that, head over to your WordPress dashboard and then look for the Bloom tab and click on, click on the opt-in forms link. And this will bring you to your opt-in management page within the Bloom settings panel. And here you'll see a list of all the opt-in forms you've created. And whether they be active in or inactive, you can see I have, I have a bunch of inactive opt-in forms. And that's because I'd like to start, start from scratch and create some new ones. And to create a new opt-in form, you click the new opt-in button. And this will give you a list of all the different opt-in types we have. And if you want more information about you know, uh, each of these different opt-in types, we have tutorials for that. And if you want a you know, basic overview of Bloom, we have a tutorial for that as well. Um, this tutorial is only going to be talking about split testing, so I'm going to just kind of go through the rest of these, uh, the rest of the process pretty quickly here. So in this case, I'm going to create a below the post opt-in, and these, uh, this opt-in is displayed uh, below the post on my blog, and um, after I create it, I'm going to create some different variations for it. So first of all, I'm going to click below post, I'm going to name it, um, I'm just going to name it blog opt-in, so I remember that. I'm going to choose my account and the list I'd like to have these subscribers be subscribed to. Next up, heading over to the design settings, I'm going to choose my starting point, my pre-made template. Let's see here, I'm going to go with this one. Moving on. I'm not going to customize any of these uh, settings yet. I'm going to have it display in all of my posts and save. So I've created this new opt-in form. It'll appear in the active opt-ins tab. <coughs> and when I go to my blog posts, that opt-in form with the red uh, background color and the dark gray form and the image above the text or to the left of the text is going to be a <coughs> it's going to appear there. And so we've created this form, but I don't know, um, you know, how well each of these elements is really performing. You know, I don't know if this header is particularly, you know, compelling. It just says subscribe to our newsletter. I don't know if this color, you know, is particularly effective. You know, maybe it's a little too jarring. Maybe it doesn't really mesh with our, our design well. You know, maybe making the form bigger would be more effective. Maybe using a different image, you know, is, would be more effective. So a different button color, you know, a different color on the button might be more compelling. It might grab people's eyes a little bit more. And just that alone could increase the conversion rate. So there's so many things here you could tweak. And uh, every time you tweak something, it's going to have some sort of effect, whether it be a tiny little effect or a big effect. Um, but rest assured, every change you make will have an effect, and that's why we, we use split testing, so we can kind of gauge the effect of your design decisions. And then um, test those decisions against each other. So what we can do here is create a new opt-in type, um, uh, a new design with different colors and a different format, and then um, have each of, those, um, each of those variations sent to different visitors, and then we collect stats and see which one's more effective, and then once we've, de we've, we've determined the most effective design, we can make that our main design and, and display it to all of our visitors. Okay, so that's, that's how split testing works, and to initiate a split test, um, you're just going to click the split test icon here. Um, it's going to be to the right of all, all of your opt-ins, and when you click that, it's going to bring up the split testing row, and you're going to have an option to add a variant, and like I said, this is, this is adding a new variation to the opt-in, which will be which will be shown to certain visitors, and when you click that, you're going to be brought um, right into the the design settings. So we we don't have um, we're not going to be choosing a new list. We're not going to be adjusting the 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 display settings because 
All those things are handled by our main option form. You can think of this as, as a, a child version of that parent form. And um, the child you know, theme, as it will, it, we're, only, we're only playing with the design settings here. So there, there's no point in creating a split test um, where the, that, that the form is being displayed on two different parts of your website. Um, that wouldn't be an effective test, right? We have to have the control and then uh, just the one thing we're changing. So in this case, we're just, we're just changing the design. And so I'm gonna call it blog opt-in two. I'm gonna go over to the design settings and here we can start playing with the design. So like I said, all the changes you make might, might uh, will have an effect on the conversion rate, whether they be positive or negative, big or small. And so you know, testing these can, can be um, very useful. And so I might change the image so let's see what I have right now. Right, have, right now I have this red background color and the uh, green button. But I, let's say I want to reverse that. Maybe I want, you know, the, I really want people to see that button more. I want that to be kind of the most uh, jarring, as it will, the most jarring thing on the page. And so I want to make that red and then make, you know, maybe this green instead. So like I said, we don't know necessarily <coughs> how this will affect the conversion rate yet, but that's why we're gonna test it. So I'm gonna change this to green, and I'm gonna change this button to red. In fact, I'm gonna make it a very bright red, so there's no way anyone's not gonna see that color right there. And so perhaps what this will have a positive effect on the, the conversion rates. Um, also, perhaps one of the most important parts um, about your opt-in form is the headline, because that's the first thing people read, and if it's not compelling, they're really not going to care. So, one thing you can do with your with your opt-in forms is, um, yeah, create some kind of com compelling he heading that maybe maybe it offers them something in particular. Maybe we, maybe we adjust this list and um, and uh, adjust the welcome email of the list to send someone some free resources. Like maybe we've written an ebook about email marketing and someone's visiting our blog about email marketing and. Um, this list, um, if they subscribe to the list, they get access to that ebook. Well, that's a much more compelling offer and a much more compelling header. So we could try that. Um, let's just say, for the sake of argument, I've already done that. I've already adjusted the list and adjusted the welcome email to send that you know free resource. And so, I'd, and I'd like to see what happens if we adjust the headline of this to say, "Subscribe today to get access to our." Amazing email marketing ebook. Well, I'm pretty sure that's going to be more effective. It's just it gives something, something it gives people something, something for free, which everyone loves free stuff, and it's tailored to the the web the website itself, which is about email marketing. You know, in this scenario, we have an email marketing blog, and so I've created a headline that touches on that. You know, email marketing you know, genre, and then I've also offered them a free resource. This is definitely seems more compelling to me. Of course, you should never assume anything, and that's why we have the split testing feature. So now we're gonna, kn we're gonna know for sure whether or not this offer and these colors are more effective because we're, we're gonna create that split test. So I'm done with this variation. I'm gonna save and exit. And as you can see here, the variation is added down here. And um, so we have the parent, the main opt-in form, then we have this new variation, the child, and at any time you can come in and, and adjust these design settings if you like, uh, but for now I'm going to keep it how it is. And once you've added your variation, you can continue to add variations, so let's add one more. And in this variation, I'm not going to adjust the headline, I'm just going to adjust something a little smaller, I'm going to adjust the edge style. And that's it, that's all I'm gonna do. So now we have three variations. One is our main variation, one is the main variation with um, a new edge style, which is maybe a little more fun, a little more playful, might catch people's eyes a little more. And the second one, which is a completely kind of new take, has a new headline, a new offer, new colors. And uh, so now we can start s testing these against each other and see which one's most effective. So once you've created all the different variations you'd like to create, just click the start test button and you can see you get a little confirmation that the, that the test is running and at any point you can come in and pause that test if you like and when, if you pause it 
those, you know, those child variations will stop being displayed and just the parent will be displayed. And again, if you start the test, every, all variations will be displayed equally to your visitors. And then as those variations are displayed, you're going to start collecting stats. So you can see how many times that each, each of those forms was shown to a visitor and then how many visitors actually signed up. And then those two pieces of information, when combined, give us the conversion rate. And the higher the conversion rate, the better. You want to choose the highest converting rate opt-in form because that means for each person, for, for the amount of traffic you're getting, you're getting the most out of that traffic. You're getting the most subscribers possible. And so, like I said, as, as time goes by, these stats will, um, will start to be recorded. And you can come in here and check at any time. You can check the test as long as it's running. Those stats will continue to, to be collected. And uh, let's say you let it run for a week or so. You've come in, there's been thousands of impressions. One of these is going to have a higher conversion rate. And once you've collected enough stats, you know, enough data, and you're confident that the data is, um, you've, had enough, you've had a big enough sample size to create an accurate test, then you can end the test and pick the, the highest converting one. So when you're all done and you want to pick the winner, you click the end and pick winner button. And this will bring up a little pop-up with all your different variations. You'll see the conversion rate of each variation. And in fact, it'll be sorted by the highest converting rate. So usually you just want to pick the top one here. In this case, um, the test hasn't run. This is actually just a test installation on my local host. So there's no real, I'm not going to be uh, able to test it. But for you, you're going to see different conversion rates here. And then you're going to pick your favorite one. So in this case, perhaps that green one is the most effective one. So I'm going to pick that. And that's it. You're done. The rest have been deleted. Your, your main variation has been switched to, the, to this new variation. And then uh, when we go to our site and refresh, you can see that new variation is going to show up. The, the winner has been chosen. And, um, and now you're going to get more subscribers than you would have before if you hadn't have run this test. And so that's a basic overview of um, split testing. You can create split tests for all the different opt-in types, types. And you can create an unlimited number of variations. And um, if you use this feature, you're, you're definitely going to see a big increase in conversion rates.